first thing to do is do the axle bolt up to compress the rear forks down onto the wheel. It takes all the lash out of it. Okay. Right. Then we tighten the belt to the correct tension using my painted belt gauge, which is a modified non triumph tool. So, therefore, cheaper. Way cheaper. This is a pre set up tool for this. So, all it does is as you press a pre loaded tension on the spring inside, up against the belt that rests in there, this slides, this slides down against the belt tension spot and you adjust until you get the right tension. Piece of piss. Really? Uh, yes. On my spanner. <laughs> Best pause for a while. I still reckon a spanner robot would be the multi-million dollar invention where you've got a robot that carries all your spanners and tools and yeah, you just ask for it and it comes over and spits it out at you. <laughs> Or a 12 year old, one of the two. <laughs> okay, 14 mil spanner. And some way to measure how much tension you got. Which is in the manual, from memory, about 7 to 9 millimetres of gap. You're better off going to the 9 mil end rather than the 7. Okay. Just because it seems to work better. Now, this spot here where the slot is, that's where you measure it from, but you measure it from the bottom edge. You don't use this to measure it with. So, simply put that in the belt, slide that up against there. This, of course, is with the back wheel off the floor. And then adjust this so that the belt and the gauge meet at the same time, like that. And then press up on the belt till you get the required tension, which is about 10 pounds, and you'll see it's way under tension. So, using my spanner, you simply crank a bit of tension in the back end. and give it a, a bit of a turn around to settle the tension. Yeah, because so I hear it does have like a different tension on the um, different parts of the belt. Yes. Yes, yeah, surprising that there is a difference and they mention that in the manual. Now you see that's already had to, I've had to adjust that to get the gauge Line up again. Oh. Pay attention. Right, and then we measure the gap between where that moved down to and the bottom of the O ring, yep. which in this case is about. 7 mil. So just move that around, go to a different spot. Recheck. You can see the difference there. Yeah. That's moved out to about 10 mil. So you get an average reading across the doesn't take much because the belt doesn't stretch. I don't care what anyone says, they don't stretch. To an appreciable degree at any rate. There we go. Yep. 
don't need to worry about alignment yet because that comes later. Okay. And this is just simply putting the correct tension into the belt. So that's pretty good. Yep. Alright. Here we go. Eight to nine. So that's pretty good tension wise. Now you can do a basic alignment, which you can do off the the fork marks in there. Alright, so that's one, two, almost three slots back. So if you get the wrong tension, is that a tension deficit disorder? <laughs> in your world perhaps. <laughs> See that. Let me get some paper towel. Clean that out. Thank you, darling. <laughs> <laughs> <It's quite funny>. <laughs> <laughs> I can see why you write the blogs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm a creator, not a fixer. <laughs> uh, that's very close to being level. Alright, so that's, I'm happy with that. Cool. <coughs> now, so we've got tension and we've got an, an, an early alignment. Yep. Throw. So, it's a case now of adjustment, adjustment, adjustment. Yeah, I've got nothing for that. <laughs> no. Now that's. That is ideally where the belt should run. Okay? Nicely in the middle, as close as possible anyway. But you can see, as I turn it, it walks to one side. Okay? Yeah, yeah, only a little bit, but yeah. <laughs> That's where you get your belt squeak, because yeah. this edge is a square edge. This edge is a tapered edge. So when it hits this edge, it wants to keep popping back, and that's where the squeak comes from. That's yep. why candle wax will quieten it, but it doesn't fix the problem. Yep. That's what you had to do the other day, baby, because mm. it was sounded like you had a budgie caught yes. in your back wheel. Yep. Okay, so now, this comes, this is the fun part, where, if the bike's off the ground, I'll get the fan set up so we don't get gassed in. Need to, mate. We've got to allow a little bit of play. Yep. The adjustments. Trace is going to get all excited when she hears a bike without the pipes on it. Side stand down. <laughs> nice one, Steve. -o. I usually run it in third gear to get the maximum amount of RPM. Oh, okay.
matter of fine tuning to pull it so that it runs basically in the middle. Bit of a Goldilocks thing. So just very gently, about one flat at a time, pull a bit of tension back in it. Until you see it just start to move. Because you've been messing with it a bit, we've got to recheck the tension. And it's a case of working between getting the tension right and getting the belt running. Then you torque it, and then you check it again because torquing can change the whole equation again. Don't you just love belts? Jesus. But once they're done, you don't have to do any more to them. So it's a politician's bike full of torque. I'm not getting, not even getting a smile out of it. Ah, uh, busy. <laughs> All right, yeah, that tension's good. Tension's dropped a bit now, flying out to about 11 mil. So that's better. We can now tweak just maybe quarter of a turn. doesn't take much to change the tension on the belt. That's still within limits. Yep. We've adjusted it again. Fire it up again. Fire it up again. This side, not that side. That's this side, not that side. Take the side or the inside, not the outside. They're front to the inside. Now, as you saw earlier, if it goes too far to the outside, in fact, the left hand adjuster off and using the grip. Knock, it, knock the axle pin forward, which then will bring the wheel around and drop the tension on the inside. Tension correct and we have alignment correct. We now torque it up. Oh, Excuse good me. boy. 
Oh, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> What are 110 newton meters. 110 newton meters. Yep. Now use that torque wrench. Don't guess. Right. And then we go through the whole thing again. Jeez. Yep. Fiddly, but you only do it once. Yeah. It's nothing's more annoying than it being out in the middle of bloody nowhere and your belt starts squeaking. Yeah. Even when you're riding. <laughs> Even when you're riding. See, you can make this action. So can I. Yeah, but mine are funny. Oh. <laughs> That's true. Now I'm thinking of me belt squeaking in the middle of nowhere without a bike. <laughs> problem with a simple solution. Is that it, Steve? Wrap it up. Ah, uh, yes, that's about it. Just put it all back together again and um, go for a test ride. See how it runs. Beautiful. Okay, action. Okay. The belt tension gauge. This is a belt tension gauge that I got off eBay. There's lots of them on there. They're cheap as, it's between 10 to $20. dollars not sure how much they are now because this is a few years ago. But um, the setup is you have an O-ring that reads the tension. Inside here is a spring. That spring will compress into the body to give you a preload on the belt. You put the belt into there, you put this very expensive piece of cardboard there <laughs> and some of you who have seen the the manual will know what it looks like all right so the belt sits in there this sits up against the mark on the belt guard as per the manual where you measure the tension on the belt then this o-ring slides up so that this sits in the belt and that sits against the mark on the belt guard then when you push up on the tension gauge this will slide down and you will get a gap here that is where you read your belt tension by deflection of the belt and it should be when the wheels off the ground for memory seven to nine millimeters yep. as I said I like to go a nine millimeter gap because I like a little less tension on them and then just turn the wheel so you get different spots on the belt because the tension can vary on the belt and just keep rechecking it with the preset compression tension to change how far that slides down. And you got the preset at 10 pound did you say? That's, that's pre, I've just put some tape on that so that I know when I push it up that's 10 pounds of deflection pressure in the belt. Alright, very simple. Um, if you have a look at the Triumph tool it does exactly the same thing. It slides up and down on the shaft with a metal one um, but it works exactly the same way so that was a lot cheaper than the Triumph one. Beautiful.